Now that the EV rebates in Canada is on a pause and the US 7500 looks like it's a done deal as well. So buying an EV just got a lot more expensive. So many EV owners think that buying an EV is great for emissions since it produces zero CO2 emissions when you drive them. That is totally right. However, there's more to that story as well. So depending on how the energy is produced, the emissions may have moved somewhere else. And in this video, I will look at different vehicle types like a battery electric vehicle, a plug-in hybrid, a hybrid, and a gas-only ICE vehicle. And what is the best scenarios for CO2 emissions? Let's get to it. Hey, it's LSFT here today, and today we're here to look at what is the best scenario for our environment when buying a new car. We all know that there are many people who think that EVs, battery electric vehicles, are the best to buy as it produces zero grams of CO2 emissions. Many think that BEVs are not the solution to the problem, and hybrids is actually a good choice at the current moment. Many think that all these electrified vehicles are just too complex, charging infrastructure is a problem, and an ICE vehicle remains the best option. And now that EV rebates are disappearing, the decision on what type of vehicle may have changed because now the BVs and plug-in hybrids are now more expensive unless the manufacturers are going to drop those prices by the $5,000 to $7,500. But even at that point, some people still say that BVs are too expensive. I know this would create a lot of opinion and I don't think any opinion is wrong. It's just depending on what angle you're looking at the story. So how am I going to approach this? I would ignore how batteries are produced and how many emissions are emitted while creating these batteries. I would also ignore how gas is refined and how much emissions are emitted when refining gasoline. I would also ignore how the power is produced when you recharge the batteries. We will look at how much CO2 emissions are produced while driving these vehicles. And in this scenario, what I'm going to be using is a bunch of Lexus vehicles. So the RZ450e, it contains a 71.4 kilowatt hour battery and it produces zero grams of CO2 emissions per kilometer and costing about $627 per year to drive 20,000 kilometers. Then we have the RX, the RX 450H Plus, the plug-in hybrid, having an 18.1 kilowatt hour battery, producing about 55 grams per kilometer of CO2 emissions, $1,317 per year, driving 20,000 kilometers. We have the RX 500H, and that contains a 1.9 kilowatt hour battery, producing 199 grams per kilometer CO2 emissions, $2,924 per year to operate, driving 20,000 kilometers per year. And then we have the RX 350H, the next hybrid, and that has a 1.7 kilowatt hour battery, producing 151 grams of CO2 emissions per kilometer and $2,210 per year driving 20,000 kilometers. And then last but not least, we have the RX 350, which is the ICE vehicle. So there's no battery, 231 grams of CO2 emissions per kilometer, $3,366 per year to operate driving 20,000 kilometers per year. So the scenario we're looking at is we have to look at batteries. So one RZ450E is 71.4 kilowatt hours. And then when we look at that, that is about three RX 450H pluses plus nine RX 500H. So with those numbers added up together, we're talking about 12 vehicles. 
Okay, so we're looking at one battery electric vehicle can produce 12 different hybrid types of vehicles. All right, so if you look at gas only, it doesn't matter because there's no battery in that. So that is a total different story. So right now, these scenarios we're going to run are going to contain 12 vehicles. So scenario number one, everybody drives an ICE vehicle. So this is going to be the most CO2 emissions emitted because everybody is driving an ICE vehicle. So let's look at how much it's going to produce. So 12 people driving an RX 350, 2,772 grams per kilometer. So driving 20,000 kilometers, we're talking about 55,440,000 grams of CO2 emissions produced per year. And that is equates to 61 US tons of CO2 emissions. So that would be the baseline. So now we look at the baseline and now we compare that to one person buying the RZ450E, which uses the 71.4 kilowatt battery capacity that we have. And then the rest, the 11 people, will be driving the RX350. So when we look at that, the RX350 will produce 50.82 million grams of CO2 emissions. And that reduces 4.62 million grams of CO2 from the environment. And now the next thing is, okay, we don't have, we're not going to get a battery electric vehicle. Instead, we're going to have three RX 450H pluses, so the plug-in hybrid, and we have nine RX 500H. Okay, so that all adds up perfectly to 71.4 kilowatt hours. So there's no battery left. So the three RX 450H pluses will produce 3.3 million grams of CO2 emissions a year. The 9RX500H produces 35.82 million grams of CO2 emissions. So that all adds up to 39.12 million grams of CO2. And that saves, comparing that to the baseline, that saves 16.32 million grams of CO2, which is 17.99 tons of CO2 emissions, so about 18. Follow me on Instagram at LSFTVideos. You can see updates on my experience with the NX 450H Plus, which may not be shown on any future videos. You can reach out to me via direct messaging if you have any questions on your Lexus. If you like this video, you can provide me feedback in the comments below, like this video, share it with your friends. This definitely will help with the YouTube algorithms. Press the subscribe button and bell icon and get notified when new videos show up. And lastly, if you want to support me further, you can provide me a super thanks or visit my Amazon storefront before you purchase anything from Amazon and or you can purchase products from the list on the items that I've been using with my vehicle or at home at no extra cost to you. And now let's continue with the video. So our next scenario is the three plug-in hybrids remain, but now instead of the 500H, we actually move to the 350H. So 3.3 million CO2 for the high plug-in hybrids, and the nine RX 350Hs now is 27.18 million grams of CO2 emissions. So that totals about 30.48 grams of CO2 emissions. And with the batteries used, we still have 1.8 kilowatt hour battery capacity left, which can actually drive one more RX 350H vehicles. But again, our scenario is only 12 vehicles, and that's why we have not included the extra RX 350H. We actually save 24.96 million grams of CO2, which equates to 27.5 tons of CO2 emissions. And now, okay, now let's ignore all that and let's go full force to hybrids. So if everybody drives an RX 500H, so 47.76 million grams of CO2, which only saves about 7.68 
million grams of CO2 emissions. And that equates to 8.46 tons of CO2 emissions saved. But then producing 12 RX500H, there's 48.6 kilowatt hour battery left, which can create 25 more RX500H. And with that number, we are looking at a further reduction at 16 million CO2 emissions per year if we actually produce all the vehicles using the 71.4 kilowatt hour battery. And then we look at everybody driving RX 350Hs. So that is 36.24 million grams of CO2, and that saves about 19.2 million grams, and that equates to 21.2 tons. But there's still a lot more battery capacity. There's 51 more kilowatt hour capacity that can create 30 more RX350H vehicles. So with building another 30 RX350H, we further reduce 48 million grams of CO2 emissions per year. You can see how significant this can actually get. So when you look at that, the best scenario that we're looking at is really driving three RX450H pluses and nine RX350Hs, which saves about 27.5 tons of CO2 emissions. So when you look at that, it does look like people shifting to plug-in hybrids and hybrids would actually help save more CO2 emissions. But there's a twist to this, because we even talked about this before. When we look at 12 people, 12 cars, there's still capacity. So when you look at the 71.4 kilowatt battery capacity, it can actually produce 42 RX350Hs or 37 RX500H. So when you look at that, 42 350Hs compared to the ICE version, you're reducing 67.2 million grams of CO2 emissions per year, and 37 RX500Hs are reducing 23.7 million grams of CO2 emissions per year. So you can see how significant the 350H really is. So when you look at that, using one BEV battery, having 12 gas-only uh, cars, you're not saving any emissions. But when one BEV with 11 RX350 vehicles, it's 4.6 million grams of CO2 emissions saved or reduced per year. When you look at scenario three, three plug-in hybrids, nine hybrids to 500H, it's 16.3. And the best scenario that we saw previously was the three plug-in hybrids with 10 350Hs. We're reducing 35.5 million grams of CO2 emissions per year, which is quite significant. But when you look at the 71.4 kilowatt battery, producing 42 350Hs, that reduces 67.2 million grams per year. That is almost doubled of the previous scenario. But then when you look at the 37 500Hs, 23.7, that doesn't seem to be that efficient. So you can see that the 500H is really not as good on the CO2 emissions, even though it's a hybrid. So with all these numbers, some of you may become all confused, and in an ideal state, we all should be driving zero emission cars. But the current technology is just not there yet. We have to look at what is the best. We should all work together to make this planet a better planet for all of us and for our future generations. We recently are seeing snow in Texas, which is rarely seen, and we're seeing wildfires around the world, and all I can say is something is wrong. I understand that we're all humans, and we'd all most likely would be looking at our own situations first before looking at the full picture. A BEV does cost more, but it does give a great driving experience with zero noise and vibrations. You don't need to worry about going to the gas station and filling up, just need to fill up at home and there are less parts to go wrong. But one thing I would wanna make note, if you can't plug in your car at home, don't get a BEV or a plug-in hybrid, just go with a hybrid. If we can get more people off pure ICE vehicles, I do think that it will be better for the environment as a whole, and we can wait for the technology breakthroughs so that everybody could drive 
a zero emission vehicle with no range anxiety and no compromises. Let me know in the comments what do you think. I hope that you found that this video was informative and until next video, drive safely. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please comment, like, share this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon to get notified when new videos are posted. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can provide me a super thanks. And until next time, cheers.